dear students in this module we are going to see that how environment can be understood by employing different sociological theories so natural environment as a social construct our understanding of the environment is largely shaped by our societal and cultural norms as well as the societal narrative for instance in pakistan environmental preservation may be understood in terms of religious stewardship due to the society's strong islamic values jab hum environment ko dekhte hain to hame hamare liye jo hai ye samajhna bahut zaruri hai ki kis tarah se muashra jo hai usko kis nazar se dekhta hai logon ke liye jo hai wo environment ki kitni significance hai aur kitni importance hai wo usko kaise construct karte hain पाकिस्तान के अंदर हम चूँकि एक मजहबी माशरा हैं और हमारे लोग जो हैं वो ज़्यादातर रिलीजियस आइडियोलॉजी के ऊपर यकीन रखते हैं तो अगर हम इसको इस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से देखें कि क्या पाकिस्तान में रहने वाले लोगों के लिए एनवायरनमेंट जो है वो एक मुकदम एंटिटी है एक मुकदस एंटिटी है या नहीं है तो इसके लिए हमें देखना पड़ेगा कि हमारा मज़हब जो है वो एनवायरनमेंट को किस तरह से ट्रीट करने का हुक्म देता है तो इसलिए सोशल कंस्ट्रक्टिविज़म जो है बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट परस्पेक्टिव है जिसके ज़रिए हम देख सकते हैं दैट हाउ पीपल आर इंटरेक्टिंग विद देयर एनवायरनमेंट। द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ सोशोलॉजिकल थीरी टू एनवायरमेंटल इश्यूज दीज थीरी सच एज फंक्शनिज़म कॉन्फ्लिक थीरी एंड सिम्बॉलिक इंटरेक्शनिज़म can all be applied to analyze the environmental issues for example functionalism might interpret the deforestation as the failure of society parts of the functional parts of parts to the function in harmony while conflict theory may analyze how power structures contribute to environmental degradation then we have anthropocentrism and sociological theory the concept of anthropocentrism views the humans as the center of the environment it is of the view that since everything is being created or everything is created for the sake of human beings so the center of this consumption must be the human being or in other words other entities are meant to be consumed and used by the human beings so it explains why societies like pakistan may prioritize human needs like agriculture or industrial expansion over environmental sustainability so this sociological perspective helps us understand that the human environment interaction how it should be treated then we have ecological modernization theory this theory proposes that economy can grow while simultaneously reducing its environmental impact pakistan's shift from re renewable energy or renewable energy sources like solar power is an example of the theory in practice aiming to understand the economic growth or aiming to enforce this economic growth without exacerbating the environmental harm so it's very important to see that how modernization can have a positive impact on our environment and ecology then we have risk society theory risk society is a concept developed by ulrich beck and his theory suggests that modern societies are characterized by their attempt to manage and mitigate the risk including environmental risk it applies to pakistan's context where societies face significant risk from the climate change like frequent flooding and thus that must be strategized to cope with these risks risk society actually is an interesting concept that reflects or that helps us to understand that modern societies are actually trying to cope with the and with the all kinds of risk and if we try to relate it with the environment 
environmental risks are very important to help us mitigate for our better future. And then we have a very important concept, which is environmental justice. So this sociological concept involves studying disparities in the exposure to the environmental harms based on the factors like socioeconomic status or ethnicity. For example, marginalized communities in Pakistan may face higher exposure to the pollution or natural disasters due to their social position. As we have seen that in the recent floods, the most affected ones were those who were more poor. So poverty has a very strong connection with the environmental justice. And at the last point, we're going to discuss the sociology of disaster. Or we can say the sociology of disaster management. It's a new field which examines that how social structures and processes affect the disaster vulnerability and its response. If you consider the 2005's earthquake in Pakistan or the recent floods which occurred, social factors such as poverty, lack of infrastructural development and governance affected both the severity of these disasters and at the same time the effectiveness of the response. So sociology of development or, and sociology of disaster management helps us to mitigate and to prepare for us for a better and rapid response.